American magic, which arguably had its heyday in the 19th century, please 21st century audiences. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Now You See Me. Gentlemen. For our final trick. We are going to rob a bank. On the count of three, you will be teleported through space and time to your bank in Paris. One, two, three. Everyone in this room was a victim of hard times. Some of you lost your homes, your cars, and so tonight. We're going to return some of that money back to you. Thank you, everyone. We are the Four, four Horsemen. Good, Good night. night. Harry Houdini once made magic a front page headline across the globe. But these days, the art of illusion has become a fixture of Las Vegas, with such notable acts as Siegfried and Roy, David Copperfield, and Penn and Teller. Even Hollywood has failed to embrace the medium, with its most notable magic flicks being The Little Scene, The Prestige, and The Illusionist, which, fascinatingly, both came out the same year. This year, Warner Brothers tried to pull a box office sleight of hand with the incredible Burt Wonderstone, only to end up with just slight box office numbers. That said, magic does have a cult fan base and holds a certain charm with the mainstream, who didn't enjoy Pixar's Presto. So it does make sense that some entertainment would get behind this attempt to portray the medium in a more modern, exciting light. But Now You See Me isn't just a distraction, as the screenwriters have done their homework. This magic caper doesn't showcase one magician, but represents the many different areas in the field. They've got the showman or stage magician, played by Jesse Eisenberg, the mentalist, played by Woody Harrelson, the escape artist, played by Isla Fisher, and the slight or pickpocket, played by Dave Franco. They've even got the debunker, who's become a staple in the modern field of magic, played by Morgan Freeman, who's joined by his Dark Knight co-star, Michael Caine. Then, because what magic show doesn't have a wonder of the world, Now You See Me also features Mark Ruffalo in his first post-Avengers gig. A good chunk of the film takes place in New Orleans and gets further French flavor from Inglorious Bastards Melanie Laurent and director Louis Letier, who previously directed the first two Transporter movies, Clash of the Titans, and interestingly, The Incredible Hulk. So can Now You See Me pull off the biggest trick of all? Distracting moviegoers from the more traditional big summer blockbusters. So this is a small scale movie, uh, especially when you compare it to the big summer blockbusters that it's competing with. Uh, it feels more like the kind of movie that would come out in the early spring or the fall, but I guess, you know, it kind of is a refreshing change of pace at this time of year. And when I say uh, small scale, it's not only kind of like in the locations and there aren't a lot of special effects, but the magic shows feel kind of small that they put on. Uh, granted, the Vegas show in the beginning of the film is quite spectacular, and I would love to go to a show like that in Vegas for real. Uh, it does really make you very interested, more interested in magic, this movie. Uh, but then they have some, they have like, I think like two other magic shows afterwards, and they are on a smaller scale. Uh, and I, I think that because they're in contrast to that first fantastic Vegas show, uh, it, it highlights how small they feel. That said, though, it was a very nice change of pace film. I really had a good time watching it. It was a nice light action caper, and uh, I think that the reason I liked it was largely due to Mark Ruffalo's performance. He's fantastic. Uh, he really is the star of the film. You go, you follow his detective more than these magicians that he's trying to capture. So I think the advertising's a little misleading in that respect. And I thought Mark Ruffalo did a great job. I mean, I don't know if he's still kind of like riding on the love of his work in the Avengers because because I really liked him as Bruce Banner in that film. But I, he just put a smile on my face when I saw him. And if Marvel isn't going to use him for a Hulk movie right now, I think other studios would be very smart to, you know, grab him because he's just, he's very, he, com he comes across really well and he did a really nice job, uh, not only with his dialogue sequences, but he held his own in the action sequences as well. Particularly a fight with Dave Franco that uses magic in it and it's it's worth the price of admission just to see that fight. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to be impressed with that fight and talking about it and trying to dissect it. And when you, I, uh, as, you as you might have seen, I interviewed the cast and I asked them, I said, well, how much was special effects and how much was real magic? And uh, they claim that most of it is real magic. And, you know, I'm not, I would love to see a making of for this movie because there were times when I was like, no way that that is, uh, an a that's not special effects. So it was kind of fun to like, I mean, I guess, I don't know if that helps or hurts the movie that, you know, you either you believe that it was really, you know, it was real magic or you kind of feel like you're being uh, tricked by the by the movie because you're like, there's, you guys are cheating, you're using special effects. But, uh, you know, also a little bit of a spoiler. This film has a, a larger mystery. And one of them, the biggest mystery is who is the benefactor to this four group of magicians. And I have to say that I guessed it in like the opening montage. Uh, and, I, and I was right. So it was kind of waiting for the whole movie for the other 
the other the, the characters to pick to catch up with me. So I'd be interested to know. So if you in the comments down below, if anyone else picked up on this, if you too could guess who it was, because they try and hide it, but I just it hit me. They they didn't do a quite good enough job. So, uh, but when you do write it down below, please write spoiler first so that people don't have the movie ruined for them because some people will be surprised, I think. But, uh, so my recommendation is that you just go see Now You See Me in Theaters. It's a fun movie. It's a different movie. I think, you know, as I talked about in the open, they don't make a lot of magic movies out of Hollywood and this is a good one. And I really think Mark Ruffalo's performance is worth seeing. And that fight sequence, very good work for him and uh, Dave Franco. So if you've seen Now You See Me, write your thoughts down below. Uh, and be sure to check out my interviews with the cast coming up right now.